Hey, welcome everyone to the first episode of my server development series. If you have not heard, I'm making a non-pay-to-win, non-OP custom faction spin-off server with Fly Disabled. Alright, you gotta remember that. Fly Disabled. That's gonna be actually amazing. I'm gonna be releasing more details in the summer about the specific game mode because it's a completely new idea and I think you guys are actually gonna love it. So if you guys have any questions in terms of how will the gameplay and everything will go along with factions like that, you might want to wait to the summer on that part because I'm going to get a lot more into it then because that's what I'm going to be talking about pretty much everything when I actually hopefully have a good amount of it actually done so you guys can actually see what it is and I can give you a better representation of what it is versus me just trying to tell you or describe it. Now the whole reason why I'm actually making the server is because I'm honestly so tired of these different servers being so pay to win and never taking anyone's feedback. This is why I highly encourage you all to join my Discord. The link will be in the description. There I'll be running almost all my ideas through you guys first to ensure that this server will always reflect the community's best interests. You never know, I may also decide to give out exclusive items to all the OGs inside the Discord later on. Also, please give me feedback on what you actually want me to cover in these different server development videos. Right now I plan covering different things I got done, any questions you guys may have, as well as asking for your guys' different opinions. So without further ado, let's begin. Firstly, this server is going to be as close to non pay to win as possible. This means that everyone will be able to silk touch spawners and use all armor and weapons and they will build a slash fix. This means there's not going to be any different lore restrictions so if you are just came into the server a second ago you can use everything that there is on the server. So you're not going to be restricted to using 5 lore items, you can use anything you want. This also means the server shop will not hold any loot boxes, kits, or any other item that gives you an advantage in PvP. So no more G kits, M kits, all that other random crap kits. None of that. It's all gone. Now that being said, the server does have to make some money, otherwise I'll have to close it. So I do plan on having ranks, which only give quality of life benefits, like more PV space, slash craft, slash near, slash nickname, and stuff like that. Also, slash near is not going to be nearly as needed as, as, as it is in normal factions, so don't worry about that. I'll also have some item name tags and other titles and stuff like that available in the shop. Another thing that you guys might find a little bit different is I plan on having MCMMO disabled. I know that may sound crazy, but it's honestly very useless on the server. Also, without pay to win ranks, getting all the different unarmed levels and stuff like that is just going to be an absolute pain. I actually think it's going to be easier balancing the server because it will allow me to make custom plugins to accomplish the same thing, but honestly a lot better. So it's going to reduce a lot of the grinding, but in actually increase more of the fun. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to roll a quick coding montage where I work on my custom kit plugin before I get into what I've actually done so far. I used to walk these roads with you Can't remember the last time I went without you Alright, I'm back here. So that was probably a pretty terrible montage, but I gotta be honest, there's not really much I can do. I had to take tons of different breaks because of school, because currently I'm, I am taking 21 credit hours, and it's not like really easy bluff classes either. It's like the top two hardest math classes offered at the college, and then most difficult physics class, and then uh, most difficult computer science class. So it's not like blow off classes, but it's... So I don't really have too much time to work on here, but I did manage to get a... A full kit plugin done so I'll show you that really quickly I'm kind of wanted to show you what it does first talk about it a bit and then I'm gonna get into actually showing you what it does so after my quarters done during the spring I'll actually be able to get a lot more done so hopefully I'll get a couple more plugins done then maybe a couple more videos done then as well and I'm obviously gonna keep on continuing to talk in the discord so if you're gonna be in there I'm gonna be talking in there asking you questions when I think of different ideas but this is what I got done recently so 
If you guys saw this part, I think I was making this and a switch statement. So basically what this is, is an array of different item stack items. So these are the different kits. Cause what I went for is a uh, switch statement here. So this is pretty much used a pseudo random number generator to basically pick different, what well, gives a random chance to give one of these different kits when the method's called. So um, this is gonna be right here. So this is the kit clicker, I guess. So this is the inventory I made, which I showed, I think briefly in the beginning of the intro sort of thing, I was talking about it. I think you saw the kit thing, but um, yeah, right here, this is where I actually make the different GUI. So you can see it's um, rows of nine, and there's pretty much, which is just one row. And then I have to make sure I get the title and everything like that so I can check to make sure it's working. And then basically, I'll explain what this does in a little bit, but um, this right here, just make sure it checks that I'm actually clicking the right item, the kit, and then it sets cancels true, and then just make sure you can actually close out. So this basically just makes it so you can't steal the item, you know, like that glitch sort of thing. But uh, yeah, so basically what happens is right here. So it calls it get starter kit. P, which is the player. So player equals the E got hit, get who clicked. So this is after they already initiated the slash, um, what is it, the slash kits command, which um, this is the command. So I, in here, I registered it right here, get command kit. So it's already registered. So then after we get this method called right here, it's calling right here. So using a pseudo random number generator, it's gonna pick a random one and based on which one it picks, it's gonna go down here and give the player this. So player.getInventory.addItem item and it's gonna add this different array. So it's an array of items. So it's gonna add all of these items to the kit. Well, not to the kit, to the player's inventory. So basically what I decided to go for here was, as you can see, a leather set. So I kinda of wanna get your feedback here. Ask some of the people in the Discord, they actually like the idea. I kinda of wanna see your guys' too. So leather set, gold set, chain set, and iron set. So you may seem like, okay, well that sucks. No one wants a leather set, which is kinda of true, but it, I kinda of wanna throw in a little bit more variety, but it's not completely terrible. So as you can see here, I have the food, so the food obviously gets better. So cooked fish is the worst, cooked chicken, cooked mutton, and then beef. So the beef's obviously the best, and it goes down in descending order here. But you also get less food. So food's gonna be critical. I will, I think I will have mobs on, yes, not mobs on. I'm gonna have animals on. So you will be able to go out and get some animals, kill some animals, get some food, or farm, whatever you wanna do. Um, so yeah, you will need to get food in the beginning, because I don't wanna make it OP. I kinda wanna make it a little bit fun like that. So the beginning, the way I plan on having this is the beginning is going to be a little bit grindy. I mean, you got to get like some food, mine a bit, but then I'm going to make it so the books are a lot easier to get. So after you get a base, um, you'll see how the faction sort of thing is going to work with my custom plug in there. But when you get a base, you start grinding books. You should get books pretty quickly, get gods to PvP quickly, but you're also going to have a sort of a fun, relaxing early game versus just grinding out base work. This is going to be a lot, I think, a lot more fun in my opinion. Okay, so but what I was talking about earlier is the golden apples also get less as well. So as you can see, this only gives you four golden apples, which is the most. So golden apples will be harder to get as well. It's not going to be super OP like I stated many times. So I feel like iron is good in the very start, but then like later on, I think you'd rather go for a leather set, which obviously you can't pick, but that's what you kind of want to hope for because it gives you more golden apples, which are probably going to be worth the most money out of anything in this. So it's honestly not really, it's not all bad. So it's gonna be kind of cool to see what you guys think about this. I'll show you what it actually looks like, um, but I kind of want to show you what sort of method I took to get here. So with this right here is time unit, milliseconds to seconds. So, okay, so if you don't know what this is, this is a, a certain time, um, which I I cast it to seconds from nineteen from yeah nineteen seventy something. So it's a long time ago. So basically, Java keeps track of the time, so I can save the exact time now since the. Uh, 1970 whatever um so you save that time into a hash map which is um which is right here so it saves in this cooldown hash map right here and then what i can do is i can compare it to the default cooldown which is right here right now i only have a set to 120 for just for testing but i'm going to make it a day um this is actually used seconds as you can see right here uh, where is it well, I cast it a second, so it's comparing, so it's assuming it's gonna be pretty much seconds because that's the way we're comparing it. So this is just gonna be two minutes right here, but I, I'm, I'm obviously gonna make it a lot longer than that for the full day. But um, yeah, so this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna save it, the hash map, when they do it, so when you click it again, it's gonna compare it and check the current time versus the time that's saved in the hash map. So you know when the one day is up, so you're not gonna be running a constant bucket runnable, which is right, uh, which I actually have right here, but. So the bucket runnable, we're not gonna have to constantly run that and update the hash maps constantly, which will save a lot of resources to the server. 
but I am going to have the bucket runnable here. It's going to run, this is, I think, every 20, 25 minutes, something like that. I don't remember exactly which one, but something like that. So what that does, every 20 minutes, it's going to call this right here. So this is the way I have to set it up. Oops. This is the way I have to call the main method because you can't actually create an object the main method or it duplicates the on enable on disable um, methods there and it really screws things up. So, but it works fine the way you do it like this. So plug in cooldown adder, we go to the cooldown adder right here and this is how we get the cooldown. What this does, it's gonna add, uh, it's gonna add the player's UUID and their timer to it from the hash map. So as we can see, it's already been added to the hash map. It's gonna save it to a YML file so what this is going to do, it's, it's going to auto save every 20 minutes. So it's all going to be saved backed up on a file. And when I stop the server on disable, it's going to call the same thing and save it again. And then when it starts back up, so on enable, um, it's going to go through here. So if the YML contains players, which is the players, which I have it started as, it's going to call restore method. The restore method is going to put all the data in the YML back into the hash map here. So that's why I have these different getters and setters to do it easily. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So this is how the whole command works. This kind of took me a bit. I never worked with YML files before, so we had to save everything. Um, so that took me a little bit to work with, but I eventually got it, which is good. So let's see if I can show you the YML file real quickly here over here. Um, where is that? I have so many different files open here. Okay, so plugins. So this is the, an example here what it's going to look like right here. So these are my two wallets I was testing. So it's going to show you the different time, but I think you guys get the point. Let me log in now. Okay. So as you can see, we're on the server now. Um, I have my render distance turned down to two chunks because I don't want you to see some of the spoilers over there, which is the only reason. So slash kit, um, click it. You get a random kit, click it again, you can't get to do it again. So I guess we got the iron kit this time. I have this little bit here just for testing reasons. I don't know what that sound is. And then I do have, I've been working on a PV command. It says it should work just because I, that's the way I test things. I have it print. So I know where the error, if there's an error or something like that, I print it to the console or print it, or I send messages to the player. So I know where the issue is coming from. So I can diagnose problems that way. So that worked pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's, I can remove that. It's already done, but yeah, this, PV plugin, it's obviously not done yet. It is going good. I think I showed, I don't know if I showed you a bit, but it does the same method, this method right here. I do the same thing with the PV. So I save all the player items in a, a rare, I think it's in a, I save it all in the, what did I do? I think I save it all in a ray list, I'm pretty sure. And I put the ray list inside of HashMap. I'm pretty sure I'll have to recheck that, but that's what I think I did. Um, but okay, so as you can see, 60 seconds, I log out. And then I can stop the server right here, slash stop, stopped, okay. Um, so we can I can show you that it's actually working. So time will continue to flow even though the server is not online. Cause that's mainly what I wanna show you. I start the server back up. Um, and then, so you saw it was at, it's probably around 60 seconds. So we load it back up. Go back here, um, slash kit. Okay, 28 seconds, but you can see the time is continuing to flow. It saved everything, loaded everything, it worked perfectly. So I do need to work a bit with the PV. That one's not done, but that wasn't what I've been working on really. This is just sort of the side thing. Oh yeah, also I'm making the starter only a single chest. So as you can see, a single chest, PV, single chest. Which means you're not gonna hold as much items and I plan on not having as many PVs as general. So I think the top rank, you only have four or maybe five full PVs. So it's really not gonna be much, but um, I don't want a ton of PVs because I think it's only gonna be good to store your main gear, like your god set, so no one doesn't take that. But everything else, I don't think you really need to have in there. So I also did some work with the anti-duping plugin. I made one of my own. I downloaded another one for some other fixes just so I can try to get a widespread of different bugs and different glitches and duping. So I'm about to test that out later, but um, I think it's working pretty good right now. As you can see, I showed a test, I think, in the beginning sequence of the video clips, and it worked pretty good. So that's always good. Um, oh yeah, also when I download anyone else's plugin, I decompile it first, and I read through it to make sure that it's not, there's no backdoors involved, because I don't want to deal with that. 
any crap like that. I mean, you know, I make sure I have my password like uh, four million. If you got you see that UA, UUID? Yeah, that's basically my Minecraft password, right? So don't try to hack me. <laughs> All right, no. But um, for you, I think that's pretty much pretty much it for now. I guess um, there's not really much else. I don't. I think that's the main thing. But I mean, it's progress. Progress is always good. Maybe we can do that kit plugin again. So this time we got changed. You can see it does work. Um, two cooked mutton. So the arrows also decrease. Okay, so I think that's about it. Hope you guys really did like this video. Um, please share this video with other people so they can see the server and join the Discord. And um, give me any comments you want below and we'll uh, work on that. So see you guys later.